Test anxiety can hinder academic performance. So a researcher wants to compare the effectiveness of three treatments to reduce test anxiety. The procedure is used on five different students. Use the resulting data below and a 1% significance level to test the claim. So it's a hypothesis test method that we're being asked to do, right? To test the claim that the three different methods reduce anxiety equally. When we look at the layout of the data, it looks like a randomized block design experiment. So what we have here is we have the anxiety level on a visual analog scale. We have the subjects, one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five different students, and they used, each of them used the treatments. So every single subject gets to try each treatment. So you can tell that this is a dependent scenario, right? Because subject one tries all the treatments, subject two tries all the treatments. So um, there's, you know, certainly it's not independent groups trying the beta blocker, independent groups trying the valerian root, independent groups trying meditation. They're actually, of course, each trying each treatment to see how it affects them each. And then the idea behind the problem, of course, is that, you know, we want to block out the differences between the subjects, right? Because we know that some of them may have naturally higher occurring anxiety levels before tests than others. Like, for example, you can see subject one looks like they generally have a lower anxiety level than, say, subject number four. Well, we know those differences exist, and we probably don't care much about them, right? We're not looking to see if students have different levels of anxiety. We're looking to see how these drugs work to reduce anxiety. And we felt like the design would work best in this format, so we have to block out the differences between the subjects, though, in order to not confound the effect of the anxiety reducer with the subjects, right? Different levels of anxiety. Okay, so Either way, because it's randomized block design, we're going to assume there's no interaction effect. And that means we're just going to work out the problem by coming up with the sum of squares for treatment, the sum of squares for block, and filling in our ANOVA table. And of course, as always, our first step is to express HO and HA. So let's take a minute to do that, and then we'll get to the rest of it afterwards. So the first thing that we're going to do is to talk about this phrase here, test the claim that the three different methods reduce anxiety equally, right? So the claim, if I were to say it in words, I'll say just what it says there, right? The three methods, the three methods reduce anxiety equally. Okay, and of course as HO and HA go, HO is basically equivalent to the claim, right? Because HO would say that all the means for the three treatments are the same. That'd be the mean for the beta blockers is equal to the mean for the valerian root is equal to the mean for meditation. And HA is that at least one method differs from the rest significantly, right? At least one method differs significantly from the others, right? So I'll just abbreviate it there and We'll stop it, but we know what the rest of it says, right? At least one method differs significantly from the other methods, right? And then at that point, after that, we did go to the data steps. Let's set up our ANOVA table here and see what we end up with to fill it in after we analyze our data. Okay, so remember the table has a certain structure, right? The table has a source, right? The source of variation, where is it coming from? It has degrees of freedom. It then has a sum of squares column a mean square column, and finally it has an F statistic column. So draw that, delineate your columns here. Make sure to leave more space for sum of squares, MS squares, sometimes the numbers are kind of large. And then for source, we're going to write that there's a treatment effect, or a source of variation comes from the treatments. Then there's a source of variation that's due to the blocks, and then random error, and then finally we have a total row here at the bottom. And draw your line straight across, and there you have it. Okay, so our table is drawn, and we'll fill that in now with the data that we calculate or work with in the very next step. All right, so let's go do that now. We're going to get some data worked out on the side, and we'll come back and fill in this table with what we can. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in the data step is come up with a correction factor, the CF. And that correction factor is basically the summation of the YIs, which are your response variables, squared divided by N, the number of values you have. Now, the summation of YI, they were kind enough to give that to us here. It's 48.1. We're going to square that value and divide by N. Now, 
there are one, two, three columns of five, so there are 15 values. All right, so let's work that out and see what that ends up giving us. Okay, so we're going to have 48.1 squared divided by 15. And when we're done, we get 154.2406 repeating, it looks like. So 154.2406 repeating. All right, next step in the process is to do the total sum of squares, SS total. But it looks like they've given that to us in the problem. You can see down here, they give us 15.56. So 15.5693 repeating, it looks like, right? All right, now from there, after getting those, we have to come up with our sum of squares for treatment, right? SST. And remember, to do the sum of squares for treatment, we have to have the treatment totals, so the column totals, squared, divided by the number of values in each column. So what we're basically going to do is to get the totals for each of these columns. So I'm going to do that now. 2.7 plus 3.9 plus 4.1 plus 4.3 plus 2.9. So my first treatment total is 17.9. So I'll have 17.9. We're going to square that and divide by the number of values we have. That's the same as the number of blocks, and we have 5 there as the block number. Okay, so 5 is the number that goes here. Plus, the next column, the column for valerian root, we'll do the same thing. We'll do 1.3 plus 3.6 plus 4.2 plus 4.1 plus 2.8. And when we're done with all of that, we get 16, and we are going to square that, of course, and divide by 5 again because there are 5 numbers in that column as well. So 16 squared divided by 5. When we're done, we get 51.2. Plus, you don't have to square it now. We'll square it all at the end. I was just doing something there to check. And then we have this last column we have to add up together. So we'll have 1 plus 3.1 plus 3.9 plus 4 plus 2.2. When we do enter, we get 14.2. We'll square that and divide by 5 as well. So 14.2 squared divided by 5. And then we'll subtract off the correction factor. All right, let's see what that gives us then in the end. Let's see what the overall answer works out to be. So 17.9 squared divided by 5 plus 16 squared divided by 5 plus 14.2 squared divided by 5 minus our correction factor, which was, if you look there, 154.2406 repeating. Hit enter, we get 1.3693 or so, right? So 1.369, looks like 3333, three, 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 and then we have a 4 at the end there. Okay, so that's our result. Now, at that point, what we're going to do is go from the sum of squares for treatment and do a very similar calculation for the sum of squares for blocks. So SSB, the sum of squares for blocks. So it's the same type of thing. We'll have the block total squared divided by the number of values in that block, which in this case is the same as the number of treatments. So it'll be three for each fraction. We're going to have five fractions, each of them giving us the answer that we're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. So if I add these together, I get three, four, five. So it's like five, right? Five, the sum of this row squared divided by three plus we're going to add all these together we'll get uh, three six nine that's going to be ten ten point six squared divided by three plus we do this we're going to get uh, four eight eleven that's going to be twelve twelve point two squared divided by three plus add this one together we get uh, 4, 4, 4 is 12, it'll be 12.4 squared divided by 3 plus the last one here, 2, 2, and 2 makes 6, and then we'll have uh, 7 and then 7.9. So 7.9 squared divided by 3, all of that minus our correction factor. All right, so it's a lot of work to do these things, these calculations. It takes a long time, but it's not too bad other than that. So it'd be 5 squared or 25 divided by 3 plus 10.6 squared divided by 3, plus 12.2 squared divided by 3, plus 
12.4 squared divided by 3 plus 7.9 squared divided by 3 minus the correction factor of 154.240 and it looks like 6 repeating. Hit enter and we end up with 13.216. 13.216. Okay, so we have our sum of squares for block, we have our sum of squares for treatment, we have our sum of squares for total, and now the last thing we need is our sum of squares for error, the SSE. Now SSE, as we said in an earlier video, is going to be SS total minus SST minus SSB. All right, so when we work that out, we'll get our answer for the sum of squares for error. So let's do that together now. So what we have to do here is the sum of squares for total, which is going to be 15.5693 repeating, minus the 1.3693 dot dot dot, minus the sum of squares for block, which is 13.216. And that'll give us our sum of squares for error. All right, so 15.5693. Nine three 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 minus one point three six nine three 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 four minus thirteen point two one six. And when we're done, we end up with the answer point nine eight three nine or point nine point nine eight three nine repeating or so. Right? Okay. Now from there, our next step in the problem, our next Part of the step is to take these answers that we found here and plug them into our table that we created, the ANOVA table basically. So let's put all these values now into our table so we can calculate our test statistic F. That's our next step after we manipulate all the data to get these values. Okay, so let's do that now. Looking at the number of treatments and taking away one from that, we'll get our degrees of freedom for treatments. So we have one, two, three treatments. We'll take away one, we end up with two. If you remember from our table, we had five blocks, which is the denominator for these values here, these fractions in SST. Five blocks take away one, you end up with four. For the error degrees of freedom, we basically have to figure out the total degrees of freedom and then figure out through subtraction what that will be. So the total degrees of freedom in this problem is going to be the n we had, which was 15, take away 1, which will end up giving us 14. That's the total number of values we had in our table. And if you take from 14, 6, you end up with 8. So that will give you the answer that you're looking for there. Now, for the sum of squares for treatments, we calculated that as 1.3 six, nine, three, dot, 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 right? For the block, sum of squares for blocks was 13.216. Sum of squares for error was 0.9839 repeating, right? And we don't need this total here. We can put it in if we want. It's 15.5693 repeating, right? Now, for the mean squared, the mean squared here is going to be two divided into that, which gives us our result. The mean squared for blocks, MSB, will be 4 into that. MSE will be 8 into this value. We do not need to do this one. We don't need to do this one. We don't need to do this, right? So these are the boxes that we have to fill in, the remaining boxes that are there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. So our MST is going to be 1.3. 693 dot dot dot, right? So it's actually four threes and a four divided by two. And when we do that, we get the answer 0. 0.6846 repeating. So this will be 0. 0.6846 repeating. Now for the blocks, we're going to do 13.216 divided by four. 13.216 divided by four. And we get the answer. 3.304, so 3.304, and then we're going to do 0.9839999 divided by 8, and we get the answer 0.1229 repeating, basically, well, not really repeating, it goes on and on for about five nines, and then it has some eights. So I'm just going to do dot, 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 and we'll try to keep as many nines as we can for the calculation at the end. All right, so the next calculation we have to do is this 
mean squared value divided by MSE to give us MST. So let's try to remember where the F statistic comes from. For here, it's going to be, for this value, it's going to be MST over MSE, right? That's the value that you get there. For the next one, for this one, remember it's going to be MSB over MSE. Let's fill those in and see what we come up with. Okay, so we'll have point six eight four six repeating divided by so this is the treatment value divided by the error value point one two two and it was about five nine so one two three four five and then it was two eights and if we work that out we get the answer five point five six six so five point five six six okay now we can do the same for blocks so we do the same thing we do 3.304, but we divide it by that value, 0.122, that was about five nines, one, two, three, four, five, and two eights. That was the uh, number we came up with before. That's a very large value, 26.862, right? Now, we're showing the blocks is very large, it's probably significant, which means that we probably reject a hypo we reject the null hypothesis that all the blocks are the same. But remember, all that would be saying is what? That all the individual subjects have different levels of anxiety. And so we kind of know that already. We know that people have different levels of anxiety. So we really don't care that this is probably significant. We're more concerned with this idea, right? The treatments. And so what we want to do here is to see whether or not um, we can say that the three methods are all the same, or if at least one of them stands out as being different from the others. So let's try to compare this against a critical value, and that'll be our next step of the process, to draw a to get a critical value, draw a rejection region, and see where our test stat lands. Okay, so again, as a visual aid, we'll draw the curve here. So that's a skewed distribution, the F distribution, and we have a long tail on the right-hand side and starts at zero down here. And we're trying to figure out where this rejection region begins. So we need an F critical value. The significance level on this problem was 0 0.01. If you look back at the problem, we'll see it's 1% significance level. So let's see if we have that here. It says there's a 1% significance level to test the claim. So we're gonna use 0.01 as our significance level. And then from there, we're going to um, look for the numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom for this test statistic. Well, since MST was our numerator, its degrees of freedom was 2. So we're going to use 2 here. And then what we're going to see afterwards is that the denominator degree of freedom, MSE, it had degrees of freedom 8. And so when you do that, we're going to look this up on our table to figure out what our critical value turns out to be. So we're going to go to the 0.01 table, look up 2 degrees of freedom for the numerator, 8 degrees of freedom for the denominator, and that will get us our critical value. So let's go do that right now and see what it comes out to be. Okay, so again, we're on the 0.01 table. We're looking at numerator degrees of freedom 2 and denominator degrees of freedom 8. And we come down, we find the answer 8.65, 8.65. Okay, so we found our critical value to be 8.649. And if that's our, that's our critical value, our test stat of 5.566 doesn't quite land in the rejection region. So 5.566 lands here in the white space. So we do not reject, we do not reject HO, and therefore we do not support HA. All right, so looking back at our original claim, we see that the claim says that the three methods reduce anxiety equally. That was our HO, right? So we cannot reject that claim. So the sample data, the sample data does not allow rejection of the claim. And of course, is the claim that does not allow us to reject the claim that all the methods reduce anxiety equally.